My name is Exanthea Walker, and I live in Phoenix, Arizona. I am a theater artist, um, and I work with an organization called Rising Youth Theater, and we create multi-generational work that centers young people's stories and experiences. People getting to tell their own stories is, I think, one of the most powerful things that we can do to enact change, because when we get to tell our own stories, all of us, we get to center our humanity. And then it's harder to have a conversation about something like abortion in a way that is um, sterile and political because it's actually about people's lives. So I had an abortion um, in 2014 in January. And um, it was honestly an experience where I felt really held and really loved and really um, cared for. And I don't know that I totally expected that going into the process. I didn't know what to expect because that was my first abortion. But I was 29 years old and um, I was not in a place in my life where I wanted to carry a pregnancy. So I first figured out that I was probably pregnant. It was New Year's Eve and I was having this horrible acid reflux, which was unusual for me at that time in my life. And I was like, what is this? Why am I having this terrible reflux? And I, I'll, um, and then I figured out that um, my period was a little bit off. Um, like I had been getting, um, I, had, I had like some spotting, but it was like super light. And it turns out that that was implantation bleeding, I figured out later. So on New Year's Day, I took a pregnancy test and it was positive. And I was shocked um, because I actually um, have PCOS and I struggle with infertility. So um, for me to have a positive pregnancy test was very surprising. It was just, for a lot of reasons, exactly the wrong time for me to be prepared um, and ready to carry a pregnancy. So I knew right away that that wasn't um, something that I wanted to do. I remember I had to go for two appointments um, because of Arizona state laws that are in place. Um, that limit abortion access. So my first appointment, I had to verify the pregnancy with an ultrasound. Then um, I had to look at the ultrasound. Um, and then I had to speak with a doctor um, and receive counseling to make sure that I wanted to have an abortion and that that was what I actually wanted to do. So then I had to wait 24 hours after I had that first appointment. There's a required 24-hour waiting period and then, so then I came back um, after the waiting period was over and had the procedure. And um, it was a long day. It takes time to get into the clinic and then to get into the waiting room and to get all of the meds and everything organized. And then the actual procedure is really quick. It takes about five minutes. I remember it feeling really kind of surreal, but also like I felt an incredible amount of relief and I felt really, really cared about. And um, so that was comforting. I think after the procedure was over, um, they put me in a recliner in the recovery room and I remember really clearly sitting in this room of people that had all just gone through a similar experience. We had all just had abortions. Everybody was I think kind of going through something really different. Like some folks seemed really upset. Some folks were reacting really badly to the meds. Some folks were smiling and laughing. Uh, and then my partner at the time um, picked me up and I went home and sat on the couch with a heating pad. And um, that was pretty much it. I think it's interesting because I don't think I have ever had any emotion associated with it except for relief and gratitude that doesn't mean that it's not complex because I don't think it's an easy process to go through you know there was a moment where I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to afford it because at first I thought naively that my insurance was going to cover it and then I figured out that that was not the case and I had to scramble to um, figure out how to pay for it I actually paid my rent late that month and so I, don't, I wouldn't say that I had access to it easily um, when I did have access. And when I think about not having access, 
honestly, it's scary to me because access is critical to making choices. And um, if I didn't have access, I couldn't actually make the choice to carry the pregnancy or not. And so when I think about what that could have felt like, honestly, my body like tenses up. Like I get like anxiety pangs in my shoulders and like my stomach. And, um, and I'm, you know, I think that's part of what's so scary about what we're facing now in Arizona 